my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. This is the Girl Scout promise. For those that are not familiar with Girl Scouts, it's a youth organization whose stated mission is to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. Serendipitously, this year, their product program theme is Own Your Magic. Well, today, fellow Toastmasters, I will be leading you through my self-defined process of owning your magic and explaining to you my experience as a Girl Scout troop leader by using the phrase joy. Joy. If magic is your interest and passion combined to the to make the impact that you have on the world, then to own your magic, I think there's three steps to it. First is know your journey. Where are you coming from? Where do you want to go? Know the obstacles that you need to overcome. What is holding you back and keeping you from being the best that you can be? And once you've conquered those first two steps, step three is reflecting on the yields. You need to take time to acknowledge how your magic has an impact. Let's start with my journey as a Girl Scout troop leader. I'll tell you, it actually started when I was seven years old. I've been in Girl Scouts since second grade all the way till 12th grade. And to me, as a child, it was more about earning all these wonderful badges, going on camping trips, doing community service. And that's the whole intention of the Girl Scouts is to build practical life skills for girls. Well, of course, having two daughters of my own, I thought, great, this is something that I want my daughters to do. So I logged into the Girl Scout website. I clicked that button, join. I typed in our zip code to find her troop. And what did I find? Nothing for five miles. Let's take a step back. I work seven miles from home. I go into the office once a week because they pay me to. This is something that's optional. Did I really, I had an internal dilemma. Did I really want to drive that far so that she could participate in this? Do I want to wait, maybe see if something else better comes up? Or do I want to take that leap and be a Girl Scout troop leader so that others in our area could have the benefits that I had growing up? This is where I want to talk about overcoming. Inertia. Everybody knows first law of motion is objects in motion want to stay in motion. Objects at rest want to stay at rest. Same could be said for volunteers. You notice people who like to volunteer generally keep volunteering. They understand the impact that they're making. But some of us who are a little bit more reserved, there's generally three reasons why we'll say that we don't have, we can't volunteer. And I'm sure each one of us who's been approached by our officers to volunteer to be an officer for Toastmaster has probably given one of these excuses. One, I'm not sure I have enough time. There's a lot of things going on right now, maybe later. Two, do I have the right skills for this? Is this a skill that I want to develop? I don't know, which leads to uncertainty. More of, I don't know, what exactly is ex expected of me? So I kind of went through this checklist when I thought about, do I want to be a Girl Scout troop leader? Well, time, any time spent with my daughter is time well spent. Skills, look at this lemon up. I am a leader. This is something that I know I can do, but can I handle 10 kids? Five and six-year-olds, I'm not really sure. And uncertainty. To sign up to be a Girl Scout troop leader, it's all online. So I'm not really sure what support do they have, what exactly is going to be asked of me. But I will say that once I joined, the volunteer support manager put it greatly. She said, there's no wrong way to Girl Scout. And so I did it. I took the leap and I decided to be a Girl Scout troop leader. I now have my own troop and I get to be the person who builds those girls of courage, confidence and character who make the world a better place. I have 10 daisies from five different schools, but I'm not doing it alone. I not only have the service unit who helps me out, I also have four adult volunteers who help me out as well. And the great thing about Girl Scouts is it's supposed to be girl run. So I give them tasks. They each are a part of this meeting. And maybe at this age, it's more A versus B. But in the future, there'll be less and less for me to do. So let's talk about the yields. And I'm not talking about cookie sales. Think of any project that you do. You have the lessons learned. 
at work, you have performance reviews. It's really important to, even as a volunteer leader, to take the time to realize what is the impact that you're making? Well, I'm gonna take a step back and tell you about one of the projects that was my favorite because not only was it impactful to the community, but it tied together my work and my Girl Scout volunteer experience. So I've mentioned that I work at a pharmaceutical company in the oncology division. And there they have a community impact committee who partners with the Fred Hutch Cancer Center to provide cards of inspiration to the cancer patients and providers. So for our considerate and caring badge, I had the girls who, again, five and six year olds don't exactly know how to write, but they know how to use stickers and they know how to how to draw pictures. And it was just really great how they kind of gathered behind it to make an impact to someone who may or may not know what tomorrow holds. Hello, Toastmasters. I hope you've enjoyed learning about my journey of becoming a Girl Scout troop leader. I wanna tell you the slogan for Girl Scouts. It's been the same since 1912, and it says, do a good turn daily. This is a reminder that Girl Scouts can make a difference, both big and small, anytime. For me, I think as my volunteer experience, what I've learned is that to be successful in anything, all you need to do is own your magic.